Welcome to our box, come on in. So we're here at our uh, Tordex headquarters in Lucerne, Switzerland. And I really wanted to show you a little bit around, A, what we have going on, and also show you our new location. So first of all, just want to quickly say hi to Tordi. He's our mascot. He usually stays with us and dresses up for the occasion. Uh, he's still in summer mode. But let's walk through and I'll show you a little bit how we have everything organized here. Come on in. So first, I want to quickly talk a little bit about how our office layout is organized. So we kind of start with sales here all the way on top. These are the people who talk to our customers. It's very important for us that we're in direct contact with most of our customers. And then furthermore, also product management right next to sales is important so we get that customer feedback back to our R&D teams. But really, let's walk down and we talk a little bit about how we develop our products. So in here, you're coming into our R&D area. And similar to uh, the entrance into sales, we have this organized in different departments. So we basically start up here with our software integration and test automation team. And if we walk down, we just kind of go down and we'll come back here. So no worries, we get time to talk to some more people. Our Linux engineering and Tryzen core software development teams are here. And if we go further down, it gets interesting. You will see some hardware. So here is where we design and test and validate all our hardware. So first, I want to show you a little bit what's going on under the hood to actually develop an embedded product. And for that, we're going to be talking to Peter. Hey, Peter. Hello. So here we're just going to look a little bit what it actually means under the hood to design a product. So for that, Peter is really the best guy to do that live for you. So I'll be handing over to Peter and he can walk you through a little bit. So what do we see here? Well, we see one of our designs here. So the goal of, uh, of Toradex is, of course, to make sure that the complexity of our modules uh, is on us and not on the customer. So when you look at this, it's one of our modules. It's the uh, Apalis IMX 8M8. Uh, 8. Uh, quad max and it's one of the most uh, complex designs we have done so far and i'm really proud of it because i was working in the team uh, which was developing uh, this module here and yeah what i have here in the back is actually the design of that module and i have now enabled all the layers of the module it's a 14 layer board so uh, it looks quite complex, but what I can do is I can actually only show single layers. So what we see here is the, the th uh, what is going on on the top, but uh, the complexity is actually in the middle because uh, the really complex part about this module is not all the to root or to, to uh, make sure that all the signals are connected correctly. It is mainly to deliver all the power that the module needs. Uh, when you look at the module, there's so many buck converters in here on this module. So we have one PIMIC here, which has uh, a lot of uh, buck converters here. But we have on the flip side, we had another one, which has a lot of buck converters. And that is kind of the, the challenging thing on, on that board. And I can show shortly uh, how it looks like in the inside here, because I have the design open here. So we are here on the top layer. Then we go in that we have ground on the next layer. Then we have some signals, especially some high speed signals here, which are routed, uh, impedance controlled, made sure that uh, all the signals are arriving at the correct timing for the RAM here, for example. Then we have some more signals. Then we have ground here. And then it's really coming in the power. So to deliver all this power into the, into the SOC is kind of the challenging so that's why we have not only one layer of power, we have actually four layers of power on this, this module. Until we go back to ground again, some signals, some signals, ground, uh, until we are on the back of the module here. So what, what is a customer able to see? Um, uh, do you have like a special way they can, they, can, uh, they can see all this or they get the files or? Uh, not on the module itself. I mean, that's our, our IP. 
So what the customer does is uh, they're doing uh, their carrier board. Uh, so the idea is that you take the module, put it into your to the carrier board, and you have the full system. So we are not only developing the, the module, we're also developing some carrier boards, some reference designs here, like this one here. And that is the board that you see now here. And again, on that board, I have enabled right now all the layers. So you see all the layers that board has. And that board only has six layers. So it's not even half of, of the layers that the module has. Uh, because we take all the complexity onto the module, so the customer can build its carrier board uh, on an easier way. So when, when you look at this one here, I again can just show the, uh, the individual layers. So that is top layer, pretty easy. Then we have an in internal layer. Then we have some power here. It's also way, way easier. And we have the bottom layer here on that one. And the cool thing is here, uh, we provide the uh, full 3D model or the full design, including 3D models uh, to our customers of these boards. So yeah, that's what our customers are getting. And then they can use it for creating their own designs. So Perfect. what is the customer experience? Uh, but your whole platform here. So really, the idea for us is to make uh, designing embedded systems easy. So we encapsulate it in the two parts that you just saw, the system and module, which we do very uh, complex designs. We integrate all the high-speed signals. We optimize them. And then we provide reference designs, easy, simple reference designs, where the customer can build their carry board, which kind of makes up the functionality that's specifically tailored to the customer. Where on the SOM, we really focus on very general purpose features and computing um, architectures. So the idea here really is you you decapsulate those two components in the design of the carrier board, and then that allows the customer to easily customize on a simpler design with the carrier board. And that's really that's really the beauty of this approach. And this is really, uh, if you look at the volume, this is actually making a lot of sense all the way up to kind of mid volumes. Some of our highest end customers they run this type of um, systems in the thirty to uh, fifty thousand pieces a year. And that's still very cost effective doing that. But what also goes in, and so that's where I would like to continue, is how we validate our hardware. So if you continue yeah. to walk a little bit over here, I'll show you a bit how we actually do all the validation of the hardware design. Because designing the hardware is one part, but the validation is the other part, which is important. Yeah. So let's go over here. We quickly check the, um, our test setup. So if you go into this room, I'll show a little bit what it means to validate embedded boards. So in here you see two temperature chambers. And so what's going on here is you think about any change on the hardware, we have to make sure it runs robust through the full temperature cycle, whether it's a medical device or whether it's an automotive application, a test and measurement equipment. So how we do this is we have these test boards. So you see it over here. So this is a board where we can plug in uh, seven units on the test, so in here you plug in the Tordex module, and then this board slides into the temperature chamber, which I show you in a little bit, and then we can do power cycling, we can do test the, if the interfaces um, run stable or if the software boots stable through the whole temperature range. And we do this validation basically for any change, any major change that we do on the hardware. So what's a major change on the hardware? In the current chip shortages, we may not get an EMMC or we might have to change the memory chip. So if we put a new memory chip on our SOM, this is, means we have to go back into the temperature chamber and validate that change in the bill of materials through the full temperature cycle. So right now over here you actually see uh, we're down at like 6 degrees Celsius. Um, and in here you have seven boards that are currently being chilled down. And then later up they're going to be baked up again up to 85C. And we're logging and making sure they run stable over the whole temperature uh, uh, area. So this is a very important part for us to really provide robust computer platforms that are fit for the demanding applications that our customers have. So if you go back, um, we talk a little bit more about what's actually going on on the software side. Um, so over here, as part of the validation process, it's also the factory programming and testing. So if you come in here a little quick, 
you'll see the first step of production testing that we do for an NPI, a new product introduction. So when we design a new product, in the first step of testing is we test all the interfaces on our own reference designs. So basically you see here our new Verdin ADEM Plus module and we flash the software and we boot it up and we validate all the different interfaces. So this is our basically our development board. It's the same board that we give to customers to actually design their product and in here you see our SOM. And uh, we're now booting this up through the software and in a little while you actually see both monitors lighting up and we know basically that uh, that hardware is doing its first test. So it's very important to understand this is really only the first level of testing for new products. I'll show you a little bit later when we go downstairs what it means to mass produce um, this and what, how testing works in the mass production. So let's go back here and we talk a little bit about software. Uh, many of you may not know, but Toradex is really actually a software company. So 90% of our engineers are software engineers. And uh, you see that you saw a little bit of what we do on the, on the hardware side, but the majority here on this floor, and I would say probably about 80% here on this floor is software engineering. So for that, I would um, quickly walk you through and here, and we'll talk to Marcel from our embedded Linux team, who will be showing you a little bit or explaining why it's so important to do software uh, mainline. And uh, for that, we're going to talk to Marcel. Hey. So yeah, let's, let's quickly, Marcel, if you can maybe explain a little bit um, you know, how we do Linux software development, what are our approaches, and in particular, why mainline is, is important uh, for the work that we do. Hi. Hi. Uh, so, can you explain what's going on around here? Well, I have various ports running. Uh, for example, our latest uh, addition, the Verdin iDynamics ADM Plus. It's just running our standard uh, multimedia image. Anyway, but actually I'm working on uh, upstreaming the Ubu part there. And upstreaming stuff, just it's just the most future-proof option basically for our customers. Uh, if we have any kind of a, you know, technical details we work on, if we solve them upstream, that, that just means it's once and for all properly solved. Yeah, it's basically a way of uh, future-proving your software stuff. Because, uh, uh, you know, if you have uh, hardware that you want to support for many years, which is what we want to do for our customers, then you will have eventually will you will run into issues and stuff and if you don't have solved those properly upstream then you will struggle over and over uh, with that yeah and maybe can you also talk a little bit about the long-term maintenance i think it's an important topic exactly what are our really commitments for customers and you know how do we help customers that they will be able to support their devices for three four five ten years mm -hmm. in, in in that area yeah we have uh, Basically, all our modules we ship them for 10 to 15 years, and over that period, of course, we also try to to really to uh, maintain that stuff. And as you can imagine, there can be cases where we need to actually also do modifications on the hardware level because some chips. I mean, especially now, it's very hard to to procure certain chips, and then maybe we're forced to to change a little bit of the design. And that can, of course, also lead that the software need to have some adjustments. And, and, and that's exactly the point. Then you need to maintain that. And if you're not upstream, then it means that you have to maintain all these various kind of quirks in, in some downstream stuff. And, and it's a never ending story, basically. If you upstream it, you really solve it just once and for all. Perfect. Thank you. So let's go on a little bit and we'll walk back and also check out uh, some of the other areas, especially also go downstairs later and give you some insights into our operational setup at Toradex, how we procure parts in these difficult times. Um, but maybe just a little quick, um, if we turn around one more time, it, this is really just a typical setup for an embedded developer. If you work in this industry, you will be close to the hardware. Every day you basically will be debugging on boards, hardware boards, as you can see. And that's how we help customers. That's how we develop in-house in and, and that's how we help customers. And that's really how 
things working in our industry. So you have a lot of hands-on exercises, even though you're a software engineer. In the embedded industry, it's very common that you're still close to the hardware. So let's go back. We'll walk a little bit back and uh, talk about how we connect with the customers and how we do product management. So if we go back here, um, I want to quickly show you um, here is our area where we have our field application engineers and uh, solution architects. So their job is to basically support our customers designing with Toradex. And what does that mean? Is um, So our customers, they will buy our module, as you can see here, this is our Colibri IMX6 ULL, and then they built that carrier board that we just heard from Peter, they customize that to their own needs. And of course, sometimes they need some help. That help can be in the form of a schematic review. That help can be in the form of helping them debug a custom driver of a peripheral that they put on their board. And we can do that here. So sometimes we work together with the customer on their hardware, uh, our engineers. So that's, um, that's really important because, of course, we're selling a complex product. And part of making that easy is, of course, helping the customers integrate those products. And also on the product management side, again, I said a little bit, we have our, our sales team, our account managers and technical sales engineers. They're also close to the product management team, which is basically next to them. So the feedback loop for us is very important. Even though we're an industry that's sometimes a little bit slow moving, technology is evolving very fast. And for that, we really need to make sure that the customer feedback from our solutions engineering team, as well as, of course, from the, from the people who talk to our customers, gets quickly back to product management and then back into R&D. So in those last 18 months, you've not slowed down, right? Of course, we had to adjust a little bit how we work together. But one fun fact that Toradex is we're already distributed teams. So our software engineers, they are, we have offices, as you know, Japan, China, Vietnam. We're, we're in Eastern Europe, in the Ukraine. You're here today in Lucerne, Switzerland, where you see about half of our engineering staff. But we also have offices in Sao Paulo, Brazil, or also in, uh, in Seattle. And of course, um, we, we really try not to slow down. I mean, the logistics right now is a little bit, um, and especially also the supply chain situation is really what's holding us up. But there is nothing in the, in the technology side that, that would slow us down. And uh, we actually have, um, have, in the meantime, in the last 18 months, launched uh, our most recent editions of the Horizon platform, which we talk a little bit about later. So we're offering software services today. Um, uh, and so that was actually nice for us that we could actually catch up. Uh, so maybe also this, this like 18 months has brought new ideas and new requirements, right? Of course, also for our customers. So I can give you a little bit of an example. We just talked about uh, Horizon Platform. What we're doing is actually providing a software platform for customers where they can update, monitor, and remote manage their devices. So as you know, we have travel restrictions right now, but our customers they still have to find a way to support their devices in the field. And that is actually where this need of what we're doing on the software side, the demand gets uh, greater and greater. Also on the software, as you know, software is complex. There are software vulnerabilities. You need to patch your software while your devices are deployed in the field. And with our Horizon offerings, we're addressing that need from our customers. I can imagine that Toradex is a perfect partner to do something uh, quick and custom and special and getting to market more rapidly. And exactly. It's, it's all about basically accelerating the customer's time to market, creating extra value, and then of course also simplify things. So if you, if you look at these three components, is you can today start your embedded development with a, with a starter kit from Toradex. You can then basically do some field trials on your software based on our hardware while you're designing your own product. And that, all that you can do with the same software. And you can then, once you deploy your pilot run in the field, still update that software that you're working on. It's very common today that you actually start shipping a product early and then do the later improvements down the road. Uh, what have been uh, publishing in, in terms of there not really being trade shows in the last 18 months? You've been doing more webinars or? Yeah, that's actually, um, and uh, of course, Daniel from our marketing team would be very excited to talk a little bit about that. But we had to adjust, and we found some new um, models and, and, and new form formats that uh, our customers like. We actually became a little bit more intimate with our customers in that time. So we had more personal interactions with them, virtual, but more personalized. So that being said, is for us, it was a, actually quite a nice exercise and, and a nice evol evolution for us, how we work together with the customers. And uh, we can do a few more videos here at your headquarters. 
headquarters, talking about different things. Exactly. We'll sit down later on in our meeting room a little bit and talk about what we actually have going on on the roadmap and the technology stack. But before that, let's head downstairs and we quickly check out our operational setup here at the Swiss office. Right. So you have two floors in this building? Correct, yeah, we're over two floors, unfortunately, because uh, yeah, one floor wasn't enough, so we're split up. Um, but because of the break area being upstairs and the coffee machine, we make sure there is a good interaction going on between the uh, sales, R&D, and the operational teams. So let me get you in here. So this is our downstairs areas. Uh, we're gonna walk over and uh, talk quickly with procurement and to show you what's going on there. And then we come back and I'll show you a little bit our local warehouse. What's very important for you to remember is here, this is really just our central setup in, in Switzerland. We're a global company. Our main warehouse is in fact in Germany. So what you're seeing here is really just our, uh, our central office, but as a company, we're scaled over multiple countries and locations. So this is our operations team. So what you see here is we have all the way down, um, we have our procurement team. Um, unfortunately, also a little bit reduced in staff here as we're still being a little bit careful. So our procurement team does the sourcing of all the key materials. So one really important fact about Toradex is that we, we control the sourcing of all the key materials. Single source components as well as all the critical parts, processes, flashes, memory, we source in-house and we distribute those raw materials uh, across our two production sites. Our production is outsourced, so we actually produce with uh, contract manufacturers in Germany and, um, and our procurement team basically man manages that. Then uh, next up is our customer support or inside sales team. They capture all the orders, they do all the scheduling. Unfortunately right now with the current allocation situation, it's a, quite a heavy workload. So we're very constrained. Um, luckily with our setup and uh, we hope for customers to also understand the situation, we can manage that. What's the flexibility you have in terms of people can work from home and stuff like that? Um, we're fairly flexible. I mean, there's really only a few jobs where, I mean, if you think about logistics or testing what I just showed you, those are two things that you really need to be physically present. But for engineering and for most other administrative jobs, there is really not much, um, much limitation. However, of course, it's still nice if you can be in the office because the interaction between the teams is definitely helpful when you're, when you're present. So we have a flexible setup. I mean, people can basically tell us how they would like to work and we try to make it happen. So now let's quickly look at our just local warehouse here. And here I will show you a little bit more about that mass production testing um, that we're doing. Morning. So as you already saw before, we have this manual tester station, which I already explained to you upstairs. So this is the first level of testing we do for a new product. However, when you want to scale up mass production, especially when you have your production outsourced, it's going to be very important that you actually have a tester set up. This is our functional tester that we then deploy at our EMS. So what you see here is um, in-house developed custom tester. We have different adapter boards that you put on top, depending on which module you test. And then you have a generic uh, tester platform for us. And so the way we do this, when we ramp up the product, stage number one is the manual tester. Stage number two is here where we have engineering basic provision, the, the mass production testing. And then step number three is when you really ramp up production in 10, 20, 50,000, that's when you deploy this particular tester setup at the EMS. So that's really one of the key um, important facts for us at Toradex, how we control quality. Even though we outsource production, we control testing. And with that, we have full traceability. Every module goes through a full functional test. Basically all the interfaces, you talk about camera interfaces, GPIOs really from A to C were testing. You have a test log file, you have a serial number to track that module down. If it later comes back through RMA, so all the way down here we have uh, our RMA department who really inspects if products ever come back from the field. Um, we look at them, try to find out what, what, what's going on. And again, this is happening here in Switzerland, so we're close to the R&D teams. We can have that feedback loop from quality to our R&D and product management teams. So and without that uh, quality loop, um, there can be some, some kind of like uh, nightmare scenarios out there in the uh, IoT world where people have uh, some issues with the device and it's hard to figure out which one and stuff? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, if you, of course, we are, 
we are only supplying one core element of an actual IoT device. If you think about, let's just say, a, a remote gateway that's somewhere deployed uh, in the remote mountains of Switzerland, or maybe even worse, somewhere in the desert or somewhere, uh, you know, somewhere very remote in, in, um, in, in not easy to get to areas. If those products fail, it's going to be very costly for you to actually send someone out to service them. So for us, quality is really a number one um, you know, initiative here in Gola Toradex to make sure we have the highest quality. And yeah, if you look here, this is just how we sell those products. Ultimately, they're boxed up. This is really just a small scale warehouse. Again, our main warehouse is in, in Germany. And that's where we you know, turn around hundreds of thousands of modules and send them to customer, making sure they can have a reliable, dependable IoT and, and medical products in the field. Nice. Uh, uh, all the way down there, uh, we were there just before? Yes. Yeah, so with this, we actually are at the end of our tour. Uh, we're going to go back up and maybe do a little sit down. Uh, but yeah, I hope I could give you a good little uh, first insight of what we do. Uh, of course, there is also finance and, and HR we also have here on this floor. But uh, I would suggest we go back up and uh, maybe uh, continue our discussion there. Right.